morning. Welcome to Our Small Footprint. I'm Nissa. If you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid about an hour and a half west of Toowoomba. Now, I did my monthly supply run the other day, which there's a video up showing what I got there, and a few of the things that I got need to be processed fairly quickly. So, we got a whole bunch of strawberries that were well on their way that we quickly hulled and processed and made strawberry lemonade concentrate and I canned all that yesterday. One of the other things we got is some large cabbages. Cabbages aren't in season at the moment so I paid a fair bit for these but we use uh, pickled coleslaw off the shelves a lot especially in summer because we make sourdough flatbreads and then have it with pulled meat, canned meat and pickled coleslaw and mayo and things like that so uh, we have about half a dozen jars left on the shelf but once you've made it it needs to mellow for a couple of weeks before you open the jars so by the time those jars are finished then we'll be due for more so I grabbed a couple of big heads of cabbage I think they were five dollars each so pretty expensive but nice big dense heads and I'm going to shred them all up and get them salted ready to go to make to can up some more pickled coleslaw uh, because we have them I'm also going to make some okonomiyaki for breakfast or lunch it'll be which is a Japanese pancake made with shredded cabbage so I'm going to do that at the same time and our cabbages for fall planting should be going I should be starting them probably next week so hopefully I'll get a whole crop of those of our own from the garden as well and I'll be able to make lots more in the for the next batch and this will just get us through to then so we'll see uh, if they come cheap in season at the fruit and veg and I have the availability of grabbing a big box of them then I probably will anyway because the pickled coleslaw lasts almost indefinitely on the shelf and we do go through a lot of it um, on flatbreads and things like that it's just really tasty and it's a good salad when in a jar because it's still crunchy and sweet spice is sweet but um, pungent because the vinegar pickled it, it's just really nice and it's something that is very fresh tasting when we don't have much in the way of anything else fresh in the gardens going or anything like that so uh, I'll probably do more if I can get them cheap as well but for the moment I'm going to start processing these ones and shredding them up nice and fine stick them in a big bowl with some salt so that the so they lose some of their water um, and they'll sit in the salt for a little while I'll, and then we'll start with the brine. Alrighty so first thing to get done is just to get the cabbages shredded so the pigs will really enjoy these damaged outer leaves like some bug damage in these outer leaves which is pretty normal when you're buying whole cabbages and from a fruit and veg shop they normally come pretty much straight from fields so you just take the worst affected pieces off for the pigs I wash some if I need to if, it, if it's just washable and just discard the stuff that is too damaged to want to add to the food um, and then just shred up all the rest of it. The cabbages are cut up so we've got three bowls here, Oop. two big ones that I'm going to salt and then a smaller one to make the Japanese pancakes out of. So I'm going to put that aside for the moment, I'm going to salt the stuff for the coleslaw and put that under a cover aside somewhere as well, make pancakes and then by the time I've done that the salted cabbage will be ready for me to make the brine and add to it. Alright, so now I'm making up the brine. I've got six cups of water, eight cups of vinegar, half apple cider, half white vinegar, and then I put four cups of sugar. So the recipe calls for seven cups of sugar. We don't like it that sweet. Uh, the sugar isn't the important part in the canning because it's so high in vinegar that's going to keep the acidity up so you can adjust the sugar as needed. So I've got a container full of carrot as well. I would prefer my carrot julienne but someone has broken my 
julienne peeler so I've just shredded it on a box grater um, and then my two bowls of cabbage here as well so the brine's on the cooktop now and I'm going to bring it up to a boil and then I will dump all this in there uh, let it bubble just come straight back up to the boil turn it off and it's ready to go so I'm going to put this aside I'm going to start getting all my jars ready all right, so we've got it all in this pot here. So now it looks like there's not enough brine. It always tends to look like that. But if you make too much, you just end up with a real of excess. And if you can see that the level of the liquid is just there. So I'm just gonna mix it around so that it all goes into the nice hot liquid. It has a chance to wilt slightly because then it fits in the jars better. Otherwise, when you can it, you end up with jars that come out of the canner with half the food is floating and there's liquid in it because it hasn't done that slight wilting. So I'm just going to move it all around so that it all hits that hot liquid in the bottom, turn it off and then get ready to put it in jars. There will be enough brine in this amount even though it doesn't look like it because as I said as you, you stuff the jars full of the cabbage and then um, pour the little bit of brine over it and not a whole lot of liquid goes on. So hopefully you heard all that because the kids have got slime. So you can act there lovely and loud at the moment, but uh, that's the general process anyway. So there you go. Now I'm just gonna finish getting my jars ready. All right, I'm gonna use number 27 Fowler's jars. These are 600 mils. I've washed and warmed them so that they're um, warm and I've got more in the sink if I need. I've never been very good at judging how much the how many jars this coleslaw goes into because it really depends on the size of the cabbages. So um, we'll start with these ones. I think I can fit 12 in my buffalo canner at a time. So I will um, I will test that as I go but we'll fill these first, these eight first and we'll see how far it goes first. Um, and then we'll see. So some people put uh, uh, seeds, mustard seeds, garlic, onion, all that sort of thing in their um, cap in their coleslaw. We just like it straight, so that's all I do. But you can add plenty of different flavors and stuff to it if you want. Um, so all I do is I tend to tong it into the jar as much as I can initially, and then what I've got is I've got my rolling pin here, and I use that to smush it down. So I just keep adding and smooshing, and then at the end I tip the brine over the top. So it does go a little softer because it's going to be canned, so having the cabbage sort of chunky helps keep some texture to it. Um, so I don't, I purposely don't cut it too fine, which is why I normally like the carrot julienne too, but um, as I said, the julienne peeler is missing or damaged so I couldn't use it. So just do it like that down to the shoulder of the jar and then I top it up with the brine afterwards just like that. So I'm just going to go through and fill all, oh, of course I've got something in the way so that's the one I did there. So to the shoulder of the jar tamped in nice and nice and firm and then I'll top it off with brine once I've got all the coleslaw out of the pot. So I'm just gonna keep going on these jars. So all the, I ended up with 10 jars here, now I'm going to top them up with brine up to the lip. So I'm just going to go through and add the brine and then I will grab 
the debubbler to poke down, which will take the brine level down a bit further as it removes any of the bubbles. All right, my debubble tool's gone missing, which is not unusual. Um, so I've got the back end of a spatula here that works. So I'm just poking down the sides of each of the jars to let any of the brine settle in and push any of the bubbles up to the surface. So just going to poke into each jar three or four times. The level of the brine has dropped in each one as it's being debubbled, so I'm just going to top them all up as needed. Alright, so because the brine has got a fair bit of sugar in it, you need to make sure to clean your, limbs, your rims really well. So I've got white vinegar and paper towel, and I'm going to clean the very top but also around the edges because the fowler's jars, the rings, go into that divot that's around the outside. So you want good contact on the top with the, for the stainless steel lids, but you also want good contact for the rings in the little divot around the side. So plenty of vinegar, make sure they're really nice and clean. The jars already have a lot of vinegar in them, so if you drip a bit of vinegar into the coleslaw, it's not like it's going to affect the taste or anything. So better to overdo it than underdo it with the rings, because if they don't seal, then you have to use them straight away. So what the point of getting them canned is to put them on the shelf and if you don't do it the right way then they don't end up on your shelf so it's better to spend that little bit of extra time to clean them up. So the rings go on the jars after you clean the vinegar, nice and snug. When I first started using the Fowler's jars there was definitely a learning curve to getting these rings on. Um, it was I spilt many a jar trying to figure out the best way to lever the rings on, especially when the contents of the jar were hot, because there was an apprehension of spilling the hot liquid while you were trying to get the rings on. But I have been doing it long enough that it goes fairly smoothly, though now that I've said that, watch me spill a jar everywhere. Uh, once I put the rings on, I like to clean the rings with some vinegar as well, just in case I have transferred some grease or some sugar on my hands whilst putting the rings on the jars. So once I get all the rings on, I'm just going to run that white vinegar around the edges of the rings as well before placing the lids on top. So the lids are washed. I also normally run a little bit of vinegar on them as well though. Just better to do to overdo it and have the canning be successful than to underdo it and have missed something and lose a jar because of that. So, last one. And then I'll get a fresh piece of paper towel, some more vinegar and just run it around the edges again to make sure that those rubber rings are nice and clean as well. I've got the canner on behind me warming the water up because they're hot pack jars so they need to go into a hot canner. Alright, so lids again I just run the vinegar around the edge just as I'm putting on. It takes a whole extra few seconds and it just makes me feel better about it the success of the can. Because there's a lot of dust in our living arrangement too, it just makes sure that there's just nothing, no particles that are interfering with the contact with the seal as well. But also because this is such a high sugar recipe. Anything sticky that I could have transferred from my hands onto something. So all the lids are on. So now I just have to clip them. I choose to double clip. You don't have to. You can put a single clip. I have enough clips so I choose to double clip them. Because of our environment it's very humid uh, and dusty. All my clips all look pretty gross. Uh, they're all, they all work perfectly fine though. 
you can clean them up obviously but um, it's just something that I don't have high on the priority list of doing uh, because they work just as well when they're dirty it just means that they will dirty the water a little bit but I wash I wash the jars down when I pull them out of the canner before they go on the shelf anyway so it's not that big a deal so I'm just going to clip all these up and get them in the canner and I'll show you the amount of brine that's left too so you can can the brine up on its own and use it in the next batch which I will do if I've got I don't think I've got space in the canner I think this will be a full canner load but I might I could put in the steam canner in a different jar these 27s don't fit in the steam canner too tall so they have to go in a water bath canner instead so let me get this finished and I'll get them in the canner alrighty this is them in the canner with at least an inch inch and a half of water above the level of the jars I'll pop the lid on it just to help it come up to temperature faster and we'll boil the once it comes to a full rolling boil it will be 15 minutes um, and then I'll turn it off so this is the amount of brine that's left it's still quite a considerable amount it's probably a couple of, couple of quarts worth of brine um, so I might um, can that up to use or I might just use it to pickle some carrots actually for some fridge pickles of carrots because Apollo really loves pickled carrots so we might just and use pickle. this and pickles all sorts of pickles so we might just use this brine to pickle some carrots in the fridge actually rather than opening up the steam canner, turning on the steam canner just for the brine. Pots at a rolling boil, so I started my timer for 15 minutes. Alrighty, timer's gone off, so I'm going to turn the burner off. Other way. And I'm going to let it sit for another five minutes just to come off the boil, and then I'm going to pull them all out of the canner. So we'll let them sit there, leave jars undisturbed for 24 hours. I'll shift the boards as I need to for using this bench, but they'll be left alone for 24 hours to settle. And then I'll take the clips off and test the seals. And if they're all good, they'll go on the shelf. If any of them fail, they'll go in the fridge and just be used quicker. Uh, once these are opened, they last for, I don't know, three days to a week in the fridge. It is a pickle, so pickles uh, pretty lengthy lasting in the fridge, a lot of vinegar in them. So uh, as long as there's no visible mold and they smell right, then we just continue to use them as we needed. But one of these probably only is probably used in two meals anyway. Um, if not one, depending on how many of the kids decide they want some as well. So that is pickle coleslaw. It is a constant staple in our pantry. As I said, we eat it a lot with flatbreads and canned meat and things like that. It's quite a decadent meal when you do it the right way. Um, but it adds crunch in winter if you need something that feels like a fresh salad. I think I'm repeating myself, but it just, it really is a worthwhile thing to can. So it is, when we grow cabbages, uh, okonomiyaki and pickle coleslaw is probably one of the main things that we do like I don't mind uh, cabbage fried up with a bit of bacon and stuff as well but generally speaking pickle coleslaw okonomiyaki they are the things that we do with with cabbage when we grow it so um, we can go through plenty and plenty of jars of that and we do so I'll put a link um, in the comments below that has um, a recipe that you can follow because as with everything I tend to adjust things as I go um, and so it'll have all the canning times and everything for your altitudes and that as well so that you can double check all that uh, it's a water bath can recipe high acid um, very simple so I will yeah put that link there so that you can refer to that as well so I hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and I will see you next time